In this lesson, we'll insert our motors and propellers. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a distributed design, use move copy, use a line, capture position, and ground a component. In order to create a distributed design, we need to have another design that we can drag and drop into this file. So the first thing I want to do is expand my data panel, and in the Coursera drone project that I have, I want to create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder Components. This is going to be the location of our flight controller, our batteries, the motors, and anything else that we're going to use in this design. So I'm going to go into this Components folder, and I want to upload. Now in the data set provided with this week's lesson, you have a file called dysmr2205-2750kv version 5. So we're going to drag and drop that file, and we're going to upload it. So this is obviously the MR2205 motor that we talked about. This file was one that I created, so it's not directly from the manufacturer. Now, every once in a while you'll find models that are already created, but in most cases you're probably going to want to model your own, and it's a good idea to actually have the components on hand, measure them, and get an, a fairly accurate model. So once this has been uploaded, I want to go minimize my XStar component, and I want to go back to the top level and activate it. This is going to make sure that anything I insert is going to be placed at the top level of our file rather than as a subcomponent in the body. So I'm going to take the DYS motor model and I'm going to drag it into the screen. So once you drag it into the canvas area, it'll load it into the graphics, and then we can rotate it around and take a look at it. I'm going to minimize the data panel to give me a little bit more room. Now inside here, we're moving components that automatically opens up the move copy dialog. And we have everything in here that we can do, such as the complete move, translate, everything, or we can simply adjust it to rotate, move it point to point, whatever we need. Now in our case, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees so that's in the correct orientation. And I'm going to move it over, that's fairly close to the right location. But notice that when I rotate it around, it's centered. And this is perfectly fine. We're going to explore using another tool as well. Now you could go point to point if you wanted to. But again, I want to show you some other tools that we can use to move things around inside of our canvas area. So I'm going to say OK, and I want to take note in the browser that I have the DYS motor model, and it has a chain link icon. Now this is because the file can only be edited from its original location. So while we do have access to all the bodies, and the sketches, and the construction planes, we can't turn them on and off. Anything that we see on the screen is controlled back in the original file. Now, if we right click, we can break the link and we can make any changes that we want. And this will actually bring the entire timeline, all the sketches, all the features directly into this file. So that can be great, but if you're using this in a bunch of different designs, you might want to make sure that you keep that link. So that way, any changes you make to the original model will trickle down to the rest. Now, this is a good idea, especially if you've modeled this and you want to make changes to the size of the holes. Maybe you're using a different DYS motor and you need to make it a little bit taller, whatever the case might be. The link is there for a reason and it's a good idea to keep it unless you have a good reason to break it. Now that this is placed inside of here, it's a component in an assembly, so it's free to move around. And if we capture the position, then it'll put a feature in our timeline for that new location or we can revert back. Now in our case, I'm going to go to Modify and Align, and this allows me to take this component, choose how I want to align it, and for instance, I want to grab the OD of this boss right here, and you can see that the icon is showing that it's going to take the center point of that boss. If you have a face, you can select multiple points on the face by holding down the Control key and traversing between all the different points. But in our case, grabbing this edge is going to be perfect. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab the edge that it would match up with, make sure that I use capture position, and say OK. So now it's handled the move for me, and it's captured the position. So you can see inside of here that the bolt holes don't necessarily line up perfectly, and uh, as we look at this, that's OK, because we know that the 19 millimeter is coming directly from the DYS spec as to where those motor holes are located. And a lot of times it's a good idea to put slots in if you want to account for different motor sizes. 
In our case, I didn't do that, but again, it all depends on the components you selected. If you happen to have some motor already that fits a 250 size quad, you can account for that motor. You can put some slots in so that way you have the flexibility to mount a bunch of different motors. Or you can just go with the 19 millimeter bolt circle that we've chosen here for the DYS motor. So now that we have this in the file, what we're looking at here is a five inch prop. So this is gonna give us the overall size that we need to worry about. So as we look at this, as we rotate it around, the transparent cylinder that's going around it shows us the path of the prop. And that way we don't have to spin the prop around. We can make sure that we account for it. So as we look at this from the top, you can see that we have this area here where we're, we're keeping as minimal amount of obstruction as possible. Right, so that it's able to pull air through here, through here, through here, and obviously around the outside. Uh, so this is a very good case because we mounted the motor upside down and we're allowing it to get air from as many places as possible. And we, we're not instantly hitting anything. So we could potentially even go to a bigger prop if we needed to, or a smaller prop, obviously. So everything looks pretty good there. We've captured the position. It's still free to move until we capture the position again. If you want to keep it in that location, we can right click on it and we can ground it. And that way it'll stay pinned in that location with this feature. So that way, if I try to move it, it's not going to move anymore. Uh, it really depends on what you need to do if you need the flexibility to move it around. But in our case, we're going to use a line. We're going to ground it and capture its position. So now that it's located in our file, we can go to create mirror and we can change the pattern type to components we can mirror the motor. And for our plane, we're gonna select the front plane and say, okay. Now notice the mirror version doesn't have the link icon and the mirror version is also free to move as well. So on the mirrored version, we're gonna right click and we're gonna ground it as well because we know that it's located properly based on the fact that all of our geometry is mirrored across that front plane. But why doesn't it have that link icon? Well, this specific one is able to be hidden. You can see that we can hide the motor and the prop individually while the original linked one isn't. We have access to the construction geometry, but we don't have access to sketches or features or anything like that. So while we do have the ability to hide and show the prop and the motor and the path of the prop, we still don't have access to those features unless we break the link. Because it is a mirror or rather a copy of the original version, any changes done to this one would affect that downstream one as well. So we have both of those there. We can do a quick test and mirror everything over to the other side if we need to. But as of right now, what I wanna do is I wanna save my file so that way I can move on to the next step.